Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to Todos Santos. Today we have three detailed builds in store. We have the police headquarters, we have a big arena, and an interesting apartment complex. So we're starting by taking inspiration from the headquarters of the Puerto Rico police in San Juan. Uh, note in particular the imposing building, the giant parking lot behind it, and this uh, nice blue fence. We'll be trying to do something resembling all of those things here. So we have a pretty big block available for this project. I'm going to start with these Central Bank of the Dominican Republic assets by McWelshman. Uh, of course, we're not making a bank. We're making a police headquarters, so I have to cover up this uh, beautiful sign and make our own uh, less beautiful version, but that's fine. And our custom police car assets for the city, uh, made by Slynn, available in the description if you're interested, uh, aren't the state police. Uh, they are the municipal police. So instead of doing the Commonwealth police or the state police headquarters like they, like it is in real life, uh, we're changing it up just a little bit to be the municipal police. I don't know if that would really warrant having this large of a building at their disposal, but we're just going to roll with it. I think it has the right uh, kind of imposing look that we're going for. Uh, you see me make parking lots before, so we're just going to plop that down. I decided to go for yellow markings this time. I just think it's nice to switch it up every once in a while. Uh, I'm using these grass step assets that I have drooled over before, uh, back in like episode 58, I think. I just love how flexible they are and uh, they look fantastic. And I'm just using those for planters to separate the parking lot from the road. And I thought the building just needed to be integrated into this area a little bit better. So we just have some curbs right up against the entrances that face the parking lot. Now, of course, we have to fence this area off like you saw in the picture. I'm just turning these into POs so that they're a little bit easier to extend in a line and also turning them bright blue, which I just think looks uh, actually really cool. It kind of just looks like they took this fence and spray painted it blue. I guess they had to do it the cheap way because they blew all their budget on this fancy building. Anyway, they also need a fancy walkway around front. I wanted to have uh, kind of the business end be in the back with the parking lot. And that's where people would actually like park and enter the building for the most part, at least if you were visiting to uh, take care of a moving violation or more likely in Toto Santos, a uh, parking violation. And then this front entrance would kind of just be like mostly for show. I suppose if you took the bus here, you might uh, enter through that door, but I just wanted it to look nice. And I'm trying to have more of these large lots, especially as we get away from the older part of the city and from the dense city center, because I seem to have a tendency to like really want to cram all these buildings together. That's partly just like a habit that I have. And I think it's also in part uh, the way the game encourages you to play with the four tile maximum size on most buildings. But anyway, I've been trying to have bigger lots like this and uh, having buildings set back from the road. Okay, so now we have the real business part of the police headquarters, which is where all our custom police cars are going to be stored. Uh, so I needed to add an entrance back here, of course, because in the original asset, uh, this isn't meant to be an entrance at all, and certainly not one that would uh, serve a bunch of police cars and stuff. So I decided to add a couple of door props for people to come and go, and also just I clip a warehouse into here, add a garage door, so you could imagine that there's like maybe an underground parking garage or something where they could store even more vehicles, who knows? Luckily, I don't have to actually build that, so we can just have a garage door there and use our imaginations. And you can't just have anyone gallivanting into the secured police car area. Uh, so we need to have a very secure chain link fence with uh, some barbed wire on top and a gate, of course. They make it look a little bit nicer with a couple of hedges, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Now I'm putting down a metric ton of office blocks and a couple of commercial ones as well. You can imagine that there'll be a lot of administrative jobs here. And th then there would also be a couple cafes as well. Usually you get that in like a big office building like this one. And of course, we have to have a bunch of police cars spawned from here. Uh, much like I did with the hospital build back in episode 52, I went around the city to all our smaller police stations and used the transfer controller mod uh, so that they preferred their local district. And I did that in the hope that it would actually result in worse police coverage for the city so that we would get some of our custom police cars uh, coming out from this building and going to all different parts of the city, as you might expect a police headquarters to do. I don't know if it actually works that well, but uh, that's what I tried to do. Of course, we just need to clean this place up a little bit with the usual parking lot treatment. Brushes, surface painter, decals. And I should probably also mention we have this little auxiliary lot uh, for our, the Puerto Rico state police cars by the same creator, uh, not custom made for Toto Santos, but handy nonetheless. Uh, I don't know exactly why they're stationed at the municipal department, but oh well. I also forgot to record uh, putting down some trees in the parking lot. I tried to go a little sparse, at least by my standards, 
Uh, they just have some basic crown trees, acacias, a couple palms as well. I'm trying to leave more grass textures for big lots like this. Uh, that's not something I usually do because I'm just kind of used to trying to cover up the grass texture whenever possible. <laughs> but I'm just trying to leave it. And, uh, you know, sometimes you have very closely cut uh, lawns like this. So that's what I was trying to go for here. Now up top, we have a helicopter platform thingy. Don't know what it's called. Uh, it's not quite as impressive as the one in the real life inspiration, but I think it's uh, nice to have one anyway. Probably not the safest idea to have it right next to the tall part of the tower, but oh well. Of course, we got to light this place up. Uh, you probably have people working here 24 seven, so you'd need it to be lit up so people could walk around uh, without tripping over their own feet, which has been known to happen in Todos Santos and everywhere. And being a tall tower, of course, we need some uh, warning lights up here. So I guess planes don't accidentally crash into it. Not that there are any planes flying into Toto Santos yet. Uh, anyway, there's a helicopter pad with some uh, flashing lights to guide them in. And uh, that's the police headquarters all wrapped up. Although there is one more thing that I want to do before we move on to the arena, which is to take a trip over to our hospital. Now, Slynn has also made us some beautiful custom ambulances, and I wanted to plop those here while I was thinking of all these cool custom assets that we now have for Toto Santos. So a huge thank you to Slint for creating these ambulances and the police cars as well. Both packs of vehicles are available in the description if you're interested. We're not going to get to the full stadium build quite yet, but I did want to place it down and put down a basic road network so that we can figure out uh, how we're going to get some context going for this thing. I'm using the Royal Arena by Lumino or Luminao. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Hopefully one of those was right. Uh, link in the description if you're interested. Uh, I thought Toto Santos needed a uh, arena, a coliseum, whatever you want to call it, uh, because we have an open air stadium. We have a baseball stadium. All of these would have uh, local teams playing them. Uh, but we didn't really have a multi-purpose place where you could have concerts or indoor sports, that kind of thing. So we have this here. And I thought uh, right next to this big interchange in this freeway-centric area, I thought it might be a good place to have an arena with a giant parking lot. And I really did want uh, a giant parking lot to be one of the focuses of this build. Uh, and also the road network that runs through it, which is kind of interesting because it almost serves as a through road to access uh, this part of the city from one of the other parts of the city. We even have a dedicated freeway interchange to access this road network, but they probably uh, close it off or at least direct traffic in a certain way when there are events going on at the arena. Uh, so it's sort of a through road, sort of isn't. Uh, but anyway, we have uh, this intersection here. We have a level crossing with the BRT, which I try not to do, but I kind of had to here because it, otherwise I would have had to basically make a stack interchange over here, which I didn't want to do. So we just have a level crossing with the BRT. This four lane avenue runs down and enters into the one-way road network that we made. And then here's the highway entrance. I kind of like having a dedicated highway entrance and exit here that uh, comes up from underneath the elevated roads. I just think that looks kind of cool. We're gonna get all this detailed up later on, but I just wanted to, like I said, go for the layout first. Now, the next build we're getting to before we go back to the arena is this apartment building here. It says office tower, but uh, I end up turning it into mostly an apartment building that also has some mixed use stuff below. There are some offices and commercial as well, as you can see here with these blocks. Obviously quite a lot of people would live and work here, so we have a bunch of those in there. And now we have this elevated portion over the freeway. If you'll remember uh, back to the last episode, we did a similar thing with the rail. I just wanted to do this with the freeway. Uh, we made this area on stream uh, quite a while ago, two, three months ago, something like that. And I wasn't really sure what to do with it at the time, other than I knew I wanted to build on top of the freeway here. So that's what we're doing. Covering it up with some ploppable surfaces, concrete on one end where we're gonna do the development and then grass on the other where it's just gonna be, well, grass. I need to clean it up with some retaining walls. As usual, we have all these weird slopes. Uh, so why not put down a bunch of retaining walls? This was really exciting to build because I've always wanted to have an area in the city where we have the freeway go down into a tunnel. There's a brief area of development on top and then it comes back up on the other side. And by the way, this uh, stretch of freeway leads over to the part of the city we've been building on our live streams. If you want to check those out, if you haven't seen them yet, uh, you can see the VODs in uh, a playlist that I've made. I'll link that in the description if you're interested. Anyway, we've uh, got the foundation for this area all established. Let's uh, detail it up. <laughs>
course, the whole area we've been working on the last couple episodes has uh, pretty much been cut right through the middle by the BRT, so we need to finish that up as we go along. Last episode, we uh, made its terminus at the central station of Todos Santos, and uh, we're gonna add two more stops. One of them is here by the apartment building, and the other one's over, of course, by the stadium. There's just this uh, little bump out where it runs over for a second and uh, stops there. Kind of makes sense that they would have this main form of transit stop right by one of the main attractions of the city where they would have massive events. Now that I'm watching back this footage, I realized I missed a really cool opportunity to have the BRT run elevated over the parking lot and actually stop right at the stadium entrance. I think that actually would have been really cool. Uh, maybe I'll go back and fix that. Honestly, probably not, but uh, anyway, I thought that was a cool idea. But uh, what we have is still pretty nice. It uh, meets up there. There's a crosswalk so people can get from there to the stadium. I think that's all right. Anyway, moving back to the apartment complex, we need to do uh, some more things to clean it up a little bit. We have these ugly pillars underneath from the buildings. Uh, we have an ugly gap that we're covering up with a retaining mall. I turned those gas station buildings into POs just to get rid of those pillars. Obviously we lose functionality, but uh, I'd rather have it not look terrible underneath. <laughs> uh, another thing that looks terrible that we need to cover up is uh, this thing the berm of the road where it's above the highway. I talked about uh, why I need to do that, why I needed to have it be a ground version instead of an elevated version uh, when I did a similar build last episode. Go check that out if you haven't. It's the central station of Todos Santos. Uh, it, it basically is just easier to use the ground version or it's easier to get it to look good if you use the ground-based version of the road instead of the elevated one. I have this kind of funky intersection where no vehicles would actually ever have to take a right or left turn. So we have this IMT work here just to show that there are BRT buses crossing here. Uh, but then we also want to fill in the curbs because obviously when you have uh, two roads intersecting, you get these nice smooth curbs, which is normally a good thing because then your uh, vehicles don't have to turn on a dime to get through the intersection. Uh, but in this case, the vehicles don't ever have to turn, like I said. So I just wanted to fill all these in with ploppable pavement so we have this nice right angle corner. Uh, maybe that also kind of serves to indicate that uh, you probably shouldn't turn onto the BRT road here if the road markings and the signs aren't enough to make that clear. So I had set up a custom time traffic light here to try to maximize the likelihood that a BRT bus will get a green light. And I thought I had recorded a whole live segment of that where I described what I did, but uh, I honestly couldn't find the footage. And I think the most likely scenario is that I just forgot to hit the record button. I mean, it's been known to happen before. Actually, it happens quite often. <laughs> but basically, I just adjusted the timings and the sensitivity of the light uh, to hopefully favor that the BRT light or the light facing the BRT is going to be green as much as possible without disrupting the through traffic. Anyway, we need the uh, same sort of PO and retaining wall stuff over here. I had this really weird glitch where these highway roads like disappeared and got messed up, but uh, I just redrew them. Okay, now it's actually time to build the arena. As usual, I wanted to start with making this place functional. So we have two of these event generators that uh, in theory could draw, I think 6,000 people, which uh, probably isn't quite as many as you might expect from a place this size. But I think in terms of city skylines, a uh, number of people, I, that's pretty good. Uh, also, of course, we have some commercial and office jobs just because you would have plenty of people employed here, uh, at least part, part of the time. And then I have a couple of industrial blocks out to round back. This asset has a very nice delivery area uh, pre-built into the asset. Uh, so I just wanted to make that functional by clipping in a couple of those blocks so that we get a few trucks coming and going now and then. In the uh, cargo yard or the storage yard here, they have a few things, just general materials laying around. Uh, there's probably not like a concert or a sporting event going on right now. So there's not like tons of stuff uh, like there would be if there was something happening here be lots of deliveries being uh, made and all kinds of stuff going on. Right now there's uh, one truck. Maybe they're getting ready for a concert like next week, something like that. I don't know. Uh, we don't get as many people drawn to the event generators as I thought we might. Uh, maybe people in Todos Santos just have so much to do, uh, so many interesting places to visit that they don't uh, feel the need to go to this arena, which is, uh, you know, it's their choice, but it's kind of too bad because I would like to see this parking lot that we're going to make filled up with tons of cars and have tons of people taking the BRT and walking around here. But unfortunately, we don't get that right now. Uh, maybe there's a better asset that uh, will more reliably uh, draw a lot of people. I don't know. 
Anyway, for the aesthetic side of things, we're going with these usual amusement park paths because I just really like the red brick. I think that just looks like a, something you'd see in this kind of place. Uh, we just have access from the road to all the entrances that are built into the asset. Uh, I'm not going to do anything too fancy with the areas between them. We're just going to leave them as grass, which, uh, like I said before, uh, when we were making the police HQ, I'm trying to do that more often. Now, I did want to do something a little weird for the main pedestrian entrance up here. So I'm kind of doing what looks like a very strange arrangement of these things. Um, we're going to add a couple more layers, and I think it'll kind of all come together in a minute, uh, especially once we get some more details down as well. Uh, but first, I wanted to take care of all these other areas outside of the arena. Uh, so we have a little ticketing spot right here. Uh, there's a ticketing window built into the asset. So I just wanted to put down some of these concrete surfaces and have this kind of funky shape. I don't know exactly why I did this, but I thought it would be kind of cool to have this tiered area uh, leading up to the ticket window. And uh, then just some lines here so they can figure out where to line up. A nice planter aligned with the shape of the concrete pads. And of course, a palm tree and some flowers. This is the, a theme we're going to take throughout the rest of the stadium as we go through the detailing phase. Uh, also, these concrete benches that I really like. They're nice and plain and uh, only slightly uncomfortable looking. Of course, we have this ugly ruining texture where the sidewalk meets the grass uh, theme texture. So I need to come in with some ploppable grass and just clean that up a little bit. It's kind of tedious and I normally don't do it, but uh, I think for this kind of build, it's just, uh, you know, we have those kinds of builds in the city. I mentioned this uh, now and then. You just need to go in and, and do that extra little bit of detailing and, and it's totally worth it uh, for your screenshots and cinematics and stuff like that. Uh, so in this case, I wanted to go through and do that. Now for some more interesting detailing, we have this main entrance area. And uh, like I said, I wanted to do something a little weirder here. And, you know, if you were down at ground level, it'd probably be just kind of like a nice garden area. But from above, it does look kind of strange. Uh, we have this uh, series of lampposts here that was inspired by an installation at uh, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. Um, it's called Urban Light. It's kind of cool. It's like a collection of old uh, LA lampposts arranged in more or less of a grid outside the front of the museum. I'll see if I can find a picture of that and put it up. Well, anyway, we have our version of that here. I took uh, some of these plain roads and made a little uh, partial circle out of it uh, just to get a different texture because I wanted layers of texture here. So we have various things with the pavement and uh, the amusement park path network and the road. And that's really mostly in the service of covering up a bunch of these ugly intersections where the uh, paths uh, get rid of their red brick texture. At the intersections, for some reason, they have pavement instead. Um, so I'm just trying to cover up most of that and then actually extend the pavement in certain places just to make it look like all these weird things poking through kind of look intentional. At least that was the goal. And then uh, to kind of force people to walk through here, I have some walls so that they don't uh, trample over the grass to get in between here and the sidewalk. And also just because it looks nice. And then we got to detail all this grass area. Now, at first I thought I could get away with not doing the whole ploppable grass thing to cover up the ruining texture and just uh, cover it up with bushes and flowers, but that obviously didn't work. So I decided to not be lazy for once and uh, actually just do it. Uh, luckily I can cut most of that out because this is a video, not in real time. And uh, we can just get to putting down some trees, of course, which is even more fun. Now over on the other end of the front entrance of the stadium, we have a bit more of a practical area. Uh, just a bunch of benches, trash cans, uh, we'll put some planters down as well. This would be like a little waiting area, so if you're waiting to get picked up by someone or by a taxi or whatever, or just, you know, waiting till the BRT came, something like that, you could just hang out here. Now, the next step, which I've mentioned a couple times already, is that we need a massive parking lot. Now, I'm not going to subject you to the horror of placing these things against a curve like that. So I'm going to skip all that and just show you the results. I also added some commercial buildings and, of course, filled it in with pavement. It's really difficult and annoying and tedious to make a parking lot with this kind of weird shape, especially one this big. But I feel like uh, for this kind of arena uh, far away from the city center, it just makes sense to have something surrounded by parking. Because that's something you see in a lot of uh, car-centric cities. You'll have a big stadium with a bunch of parking directly around it pretty and pretty much nothing else. Uh, not all the time. There are definitely plenty of uh, stadiums and dense areas where it's not surrounded by parking, but but we already have our stadium that's, you know, walkable and transit oriented and all that. So I just didn't want to repeat myself here and uh, I wanted to make a giant parking lot like that. So I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's pretty much the right scale. I, I think it could even be a little bit bigger, but I didn't want to go too crazy. I just want to go just a little bit crazy. OK, I think I've been talking long enough. It's been about 10 minutes since we've done a detailed time lapse, so I'm going to show <laughs>
usual, I did detailing and then lighting, and then there were a bunch of details I forgot to do, so we uh, need some decoration out front, because it just looked way too plain and way too uh, close to the parking. There needed to be some separation here uh, between the parking and the arena. So I have some bollards. Uh, they're not the most beautiful thing ever, but I think they'll work. And some crosswalks where they make sense. Uh, you don't want people just uh, running across the road. Of course, they're going to do it anyway, uh, but crosswalks where it makes sense, why not? Uh, the entrance to the road network as well, I thought looked a little plain. So we just have some bark planters. I think those look nice. And uh, the same palette of trees and flowers and shrubs, that kind of stuff. Now, I was ill-prepared for this part of the detailing, but I wanted to have a custom sign. Now, the name Royal Arena is baked into the asset, which is totally fine. Uh, so we're gonna, just going to go with calling it the Royal Arena. I thought it would be cool to have something more fitting to San Juan, but... Uh, maybe calling it the Coliseo de something. I would have to come up with a name. But anyway, it's the Royal Arena. I didn't feel like messing with the arena asset, so we're just going to go with that. I found that uh, when you stretch textures like this, or when you stretch an object with PO, it stretches the texture, which then stretches the text that you put on it. But you can actually adjust the stretch of the text itself, basically to compensate. So you can get a normal looking line of text on a stretched texture, which I did not know before this. And uh, I think that's pretty handy for making things like this. Anyway, we have the Royal Arena. It's a very plain sign, but uh, like I said, I was ill-prepared for this. I suppose I could make something in Photoshop and uh, put that onto this as a custom texture. Uh, maybe I'll do that, but honestly, probably not. Also, we need to light it up, of course. Put some flowers, some hedges, and uh, we're just about done. Well, except for the part where uh, I forgot that I wanted to put a giant neighborhood surrounding it. Uh, so really quickly, we're going to put down a road network. It's going to create a buffer between this part of the city and the part that we've been building on our live streams. Again, link is in the description if you want to watch the recordings of those. Anyway, this is going to become a regular feature of the series because we need to make a lot of undetailed, vast residential areas. And if I just make episode after episode doing that, or if I have to live stream at all, we're never going to finish this, and, uh, you know, I think we're going to finish Toto Santos fairly soon, hopefully before the end of the year, without sacrificing too much detail or too many fun ideas that I have for the city. Anyway, that's the end of this episode. I really hope that you enjoyed your time in the city today, and I can't wait to see you on the next one. Bye bye <music>